Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20 and welcome to episode 54 of Direwolf20's server play series. Uh, running off towards the uh, workshop where last episode I left myself a few goodies. Yep, red doped wafers. Uh, so right now inventory is pretty empty, but that's okay. It's all hanging out back in the main area over there. Chilling in the chest in the nuclear reactor room. Uh, today's episode, I want to set up a Lapatron charging station, taking advantage of all the energy we've got stored in our MFSUs here. Yep, you can see my reactor is still running. Gonna just grab a few things. Probably gonna need my screwdriver and who knows what else. I'll clean up this whole chest thing in a bit here. But for now, we're good. Uh, producing a good amount of EU. Um, everything's running, everything's good. Hmm. Yeah, I think it's all pretty good. How's this thing doing? So I just turned on the lever. We're going to let this run for an extended period of time now because I want to be a little bit more comfortable with it. I also want to make sure that this thing, when it does fill up, emits a redstone signal properly. Uh, the bug that we found an episode or two back where we had to force a block update for this redstone signal update to come out. Hey, Alex, remember when the redstone signal state wasn't working properly from the MFSU? Yeah. Uh, Richard G is aware of the bug and has fixed it for 144. Ah, so it was an IC2 problem. Yep. Okay. Um, also, the red alloy wire not connecting to the MFSU was an IC2 problem. How the hell did IC2 affect the red alloy wire like that? It flagged the block as transparent, so it was acting like glass. Aha. Uh Aha. -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, that would do it. Right? Yeah. So, that was that. Gonna need a little bit of gold. <laughs> I don't have enough gold. Wow, I have a lot of iron. I'm pretty pleased about that. Uh, we'll see if that's enough. Let's see, what do I get here? That should get me a good amount of gold. Yeah, I'm good on iron. Oh, I don't think I've actually visited my uh, quarry since the server last crashed. Every time the server crashes, I have to go visit my quarry for a moment because the chunk loader blocks at the moment don't force load a dimension. So you can see the quarry was not running. Uh, by visiting this dimension, it did start running, and now the chunk loading mechanics of the quarry will keep this area loaded, but the entire dimension wasn't loaded yet, so I had to go visit it real quick. And now everything's running beautifully. How's my uh, UU matter doing, by the way? Because uh, now that I've got all this power generation, I feel like it's getting pretty close to uh, gravitation suit time. Oh yeah, look at that. Pretty cool stuff. You don't have materials for that. <laughs> Says who? I've got like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, almost, well, eight and a little bit more stacks of UU matter. Eight stacks. I don't have the materials okay. for grav suit. The, the eight stacks of UUM would make it be enough to make the quantum suit and maybe one, part, uh, uh, about 20%. Well, no, if you're going to use UUM for all of it, that, that's a, the eight stacks of UUM is enough to make the iridium, iridium plates that you're going to need for it. And yeah, that's all I'm more, for. Maybe a few more pieces, but you're going to need like eight stacks of iron ore, eight stacks of copper ore, eight stacks of tin ore. I think I'm pretty close to that. I've got um, one, two, three stacks of copper blocks. I've got a stack of tin blocks, plus more. And then I've got a good number of iron blocks as well hanging out around here. Well, I said eight stacks of the ore, which means for ingots, you're gonna need like 16 stacks of the ingots. Right, well, I'm talking about stacks of blocks. Yeah. Um, so I'm doing yeah, pretty no, good. Like I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> well, if you're if you if you already have a lot of the uh, reactor components, because the gravity suit actually uses a lot of reactor components. Oh yeah. Yeah, like the copper plating and uh, the 60k coolant cells. Yeah, it's that recipe is insane. Yeah, I'm fully aware. I made it in in, in uh, what it was it uh, no, one, no, three, two? no. The, one, the last it? one we made, it's been changed. It's more insane. It's more insane? Yes. Gravity chest plate requires a quantum suit body armor, which we know is probably not too bad. Superconductors and gravitation. Uh, superconductor covers. That doesn't look that much more crazy. That's pretty similar to what it was before, I think. No, the superconductor covers, but look, when you get into the other parts, you're going to need four 60K coolant cells for each... Uh, I mean, you're going to need other, they change, the deeper you go into the recipe, you look at those. Yeah, that's a little crazy, but not too crazy. 60k coolant cells aren't that hard to get. It still uses a lot, it uses like five times the tin it used to. 
Yeah. How's the ultimate lap pack look? Oh, that doesn't look so bad. Just yeah, the ultimate lap, it takes yeah, it takes one superconductor, but you're going to have one of those left over anyway. Uh, yeah. So you can actually technically make two ultimate lap packs because you're going to end up with one superconductor left over. I need LRAM to come on and give me some blaze rods. <laughs> um, actually, if when you're not recording or something like that, if you want to help me, I don't know exactly. Everyone's saying that somehow you use water or something like that. I've got a T5 blaze, blaze shard. I just have to figure out how to build the farm that deals with them. Um, cool. I've got the shard. We I should build it in Richard build house. house. <laughs> He's muted, so he can't hear you. He's watching something for FTB or something like that. <laughs> I'm going to see if LRM's going to come uh, join us and just give me some blaze rods, because I need to make a ender chest, at least one. Um, yeah, I, I need, like, well, I need to get that thing set up, because I need, like, two stacks of blaze rods. I need to make some more extra-dimensional things. You know what else I need is some, uh, some ender pearls. I can get those. I'm getting ready to go create a uh, T5 ender shard as soon as I finish moving. Nice. I was just going to use equivalent exchange. Boink. Uh, is the Philosopher's Stone out now, out now? Well, the Minium Stone can do it. I didn't know the Minium Stone could do it. Yeah, sure. Minium Stone can do all the recipes. It just takes uh, damage. Every time it does it, it takes a little bit of damage, and you can only use it so many times before you have to make a new one. The Philosopher's Stone, I, I think it's still going to take damage, but it's going to, like, I don't know, last a lot longer and be able to do cooler things. I uh, probably might have some cool plans. Anyway, YouTube, I'll be back in a few once I get my hands on some blaze rods, which I might poke Elram again for. All right, guys, I think I've got everything I need minus one component. I never did get my blaze rods. I, you know, told other on IRC, like, hey, I need some uh, blaze rods. Come log in. And she's like, oh, really? And then she didn't log in. So I was like, oh. But maybe she'll come on later. I think she's working on the port for 144, so I don't want to bug her. But ideally, I should be able to set this up like this uh, and this filter here. I'm going to have to, unfortunately, use a couple Lapatron crystals for this build um, that are not going to be refunded to me anytime soon. So, uh... Get a few of these, that ought to do. Enough of them. And uh, some more redstone. Definitely need more redstone and a pair of diamonds. So I should change it from 10 to 100, right? Exactly. That's the setting change that you should make for the industrial craft nuclear reactors. I think we figured <laughs> out, by the way, YouTube, um, why the reactors were misbehaving the way they were last episode. It's because of a config setting on the server. So we're changing it to the way it's supposed to behave. Um, Richard G said, now change it to this and you'll be fine. So that's what we're doing. That would be uh, insane if I set it to 100. It'd probably blow everything in your line. <laughs> it would be bad, yeah. <laughs> I wonder if there's a max. There probably is, I'm sure. Um, also, is, we still... still need block updates for this thing to fix. Like, he's not turning on unless I force a block update here. Like, I can do that with, like, a timer or something, I'm sure. But for now, I'll just... I'm waiting for 144 because he said when we update, it's going to be fixed. And we're, like, updating either today or tomorrow. So, uh, yeah, that should be cool. So then this guy needs to emit empty Lapatron crystals. I want to test something real quick. Um, this guy... Okay, that was cool. That's also cool. So I should have everything manually shut off right now. I'm just testing a theory. Like, it's weird to me that Lapatron crystals, when you craft them, don't have a value. AKA a damage bar is kind of what I mean by a value. Like, there's a number on the end there, and it's not there when you first craft them. So I'm pretty sure I need to, like, place them in an MFSU and, un, you know, drain the power out, and that should be cool. So let's see. They Do you need them to have a certain value in order to load them? Because, uh, I mean, they load in just fine. Just they create their damage bar the first time they're put in. Well, yeah, but the reason I want to do that is because I need to have the damage bar there when I put it in the filter. Ah. You know what I mean? So this filter will only pull out empty Lapatron crystals. Or you can use two Lapatrons in there, one that has the no damage bar value and one that does. Well, that means I have to use two Lapatrons in the filter. I'm not doing that. People can get themselves yeah. their, you know, proper stuff before... Uh, I was going to say, well, or or let CPW know, and maybe he can fix it. Well, he doesn't do Lapatron crystals. I 
I only make CPW fix every other mod. Industrial craft? I'm not gonna make him do that, man. Uh, we can just tell Richard G about it then. Oh, I will. I tell Richard G about all the bugs. Found another bug, Richard G. <laughs> I bet you you're his favorite. Probably. Now this one, unfortunately, I do have to fully charge. So I have to have a fully charged MFSU uh, Lapatron crystal in here so that the filter only pulls it out after it's been filled. Not too big a deal. Don't worry. Oh, and we're probably going to have to break this block. That'll do. Uh, now I want to get over to here. And hook up this guy. Oh man, I know I got stuff. Where'd it go? I know I brought some things here. What'd I do with them? Could have sworn I grabbed this before. Ah, oh, there they are. Hollow covers. Cool. I want to make this look nice, you know? I mean, this is the room that everybody's going to be coming to to do stuff. I want it to look fancy. Perfect. So, yeah, I didn't need to do this. Like, the, the shortest path for this to happen would be um, not the way I'm doing it right now. But, whatever. I want it to look nice from inside the room. So right here, here, Could probably shorten this up a bit if I really needed to, but meh. Oh, maybe I'll just do this straight underground here like this. That'll look nice, right? Not too shabby. Now the last step here is, is this thing fully charged yet? Yeah, it is. Perfect. So now, if I place this guy in here... <coughs> is that CPW? Yeah, I'm here. Hello. What's up, man? So how did the uh, 144 port go, by the way? Was it like a tricky one or not so bad? Not bad. Uh... I think we're probably going to have to postpone till tomorrow. Uh, Ello wants to take another day to harden red power a bit more, which that's is fine. fine. Yeah, no problem. No, I mean, I, can, it's, it's I think I think going going live with one four four the day after one four four comes out really is a heck of a lot better than we ever were before, <laughs> right? Like that's pretty epic. Well, um, look at the broke way. forest, right? Uh, we're well, no, we haven't broken anything yet. I haven't put, accepted the pull. Um, you know, there are still people running 125 servers because they can't update. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they can't update what? They can't update from 125. It, so many mods just became abandonware at that point. Oh, because the people who were doing them either couldn't do it or didn't want channel. to do the massive update? No one could. A lot of people couldn't handle the one three two update. Ouch. Yeah, one three one three two was a pretty major major update. Like, LRAM's still working on it, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, and she's almost she's, a rewrite. She's heck of a bright person, right? So like the fact that she had to do that much work to go from you know one two five to one three two, and her mod was already multiplayer compatible. Like it wasn't like it was a single player only mod, right? No, it, it just broke it so much. It was uh, it was messy. But, uh... All right, so here's what should happen, guys. The timer there should tick. It should pull only empty Lapatron crystals out of this chest, which will eventually be replaced with a uh, uh, an Ender chest, and then it'll pump it into here. And the filter on the back will only pull out full Lapatron crystals. So let's see what happens. And it pulses every ten seconds. So, tick. Lapatron's gone. Lapatron's in, and it's charging. Um, now this guy is of course filling up the uh, MFSU. It's kind of filling it back up. So we're gonna turn on our nuclear reactor in a minute here. Let it run. Have you seen my nuclear reactor yet, CPW? I'm pretty proud of it. 
I saw the room. I haven't actually checked that out yet, so... Oh, yeah, you have to come check it out. Like, it's pretty awesome. It's got so many, like, controllable conditionals. Like, everything that needs to shut it off will shut it off. Like, if the energy storage blocks nearby are full, it shuts off the reactor. If the reactor gets too hot, it shuts it off. And it's got a manual kill switch. <laughs> and it's got lights to indicate when it's on a cooling cycle. It's awesome. Did I ever set you back to uh, 180? I didn't. There we go. Like, if it overheats, it'll enter a three-minute cooling cycle where it, like, cools everything off before it allows it to turn back on again. All right, so this thing getting full, getting full. So see, uh, yeah. We're almost there. And this will automatically full. So what I'm planning here, basically, is so that anybody who wants can just place down in their house, anywhere, in anybody's house, uh, an ender chest with the designated color code, and anything they place in there, any Lapatron crystals they place in there, will automatically recharge themselves. So if anybody feels like, hey, I want to build, like, you know, a little out-in-the-middle-of-nowhere Industrial Craft 2 setup, they can do that. King Lemming, by the way, how's it going with, uh... Some kind of thing to automatically pick up redstone energy cells. I know you are considering that. And considering I'm filming right now, like, keep in mind, you know, if you don't want to answer that. Uh, I had a request from somebody else today, and that's, yeah, that will be going in. Cool. How's it going to work? Like, are you going to have a block dedicated to it or something? Like, or what do you got in mind? Uh, no, it will work with fake players. Okie dokie. So the plan is that a red power deployer equipped with a wrench will be able to do it. Neat. And there might be other things. I'll leave it at that. So a red power deployer equipped with a wrench will be able to do it. So you won't have to shift right click anymore. Just right clicking it with the wrench will pop it off. Um, sorry, what? You won't have to shift right click anymore to get the redstone energy cell back? No, no, players will still have to shift right-click. Oh, it's but if it's in a... Fake... Oh. Right, we give fake players the benefit of the doubt. Because presumably a deployer cannot sneak. Right, so that was my thing, right? So, right. Okay. Uh, unless, unless Elo makes a sneaky deployer. I have been pushing for a Ninja Turtle. I really have. I know you have. <laughs> <laughs> You've been wanting a Ninja Turtle for a while. How's Dan200 saying about that? Is he uh, is he agreeing with that idea or no? Yeah, we can talk about that off stream. <laughs> He's probably like, no. <laughs> Richard G will do it for you. He loves adding turtles. It's not necessary at this juncture. Nice. All right, YouTube. Well, I'm going to clean up my inventory. I've got all kinds of stuff left over here from this build. I feel like it's pretty close to done. I need to review to make sure it's doing everything I want it to do, and then I'll dub it done. So I'll be back in a few minutes. All right, guys, uh, put a few finishing touches on my room here. Nothing too fancy. And uh, CPW and King Lemming were chatting about something, so I'm going to let them continue, and you guys can just read the signs that I blazed. Okay, I'm going to rename Liquid Data to... So you're messing around with uh, the new Liquid API thing that you're talking about? Mm-hmm. That's cool. So what's it going to do? Like, it's going to make it so that you guys can more easily add new liquids to the game and they can be placed in world no problem, basically? The whole idea is that it centralizes liquids in the same way that and gives them close to first-class status, similar to regular items. Because um, they, they've, they've been in a sort of weird corner case for a bit. Billcraft does a lot of stuff around liquids. Red Power does a lot of stuff around liquids. And... There's no commonality between the two things, and then you've got stuff like Railcraft adding steam, and then you've got King Lemming's um, thermal expansion and liquid redstone, and then you've got people who want to add liquid blood, and you've got forestry with honey, seed oil, and all the other fun stuff it adds. You know, there's a, there's a dozen liquids in the game, and um, there isn't a central API, so a lot of them are pulling in bits of build craft to handle it, so a lot of them are pulling in all sorts of other things. And, Some of uh, them are just doing their own thing, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, well, Red Power 2 was doing pretty much its own thing, so there was never going to be any real interoperability between Red Power liquids and other liquids. 
But they should have been, really, because liquid is liquid, you know. Yeah, sure. It, it shouldn't require a, a, a bunch of random odd job mods to get something like milk in the game. So, you know. Um, so the idea was Forge is becoming sort of a centralised hub for where things need to go when they need to sort of cross across those mod boundaries to some extent. You know, the ore dictionary provides that functionality for ores and items and liquid dictionary is going to try and provide the same thing for liquids. And, nice. you know, pulled it in from Billcraft. So, so uh, what should I get... call this? Liquid data. Item liquid data sound good, King Lemming? Hmm. Uh... I don't know, maybe liquid container re Oh no, sorry, not the right item. Uh, the liquid data, liquid the data container, itself, yes. right. Liquid container data. That seems fair, is. yeah. Yeah, okay, that's been renamed, done. So are we gonna, uh, we gonna get a uh, multi-block pulverizer thing that we can drop villagers in and have liquefied villager? <laughs> that... That is horrible, <laughs> really. <laughs> well, since you mentioned it... Brilliant. <laughs> now, now it's going to be in thermal expansion, by the way. <laughs> no, um, so here's what I did with thermal expansion. People have been asking, hey, can you come up with another use for liquid redstone? So just Which, yeah, I like that idea. Yeah. I like that. So goofing around today, I, mean, I did make liquid villager in a sense. Um, I, uh, I put liquid redstone in a bottle, combined it with a stick and a feather, and then shot it from a bow, and it exploded. So... Nice. That will likely be going in at some point with a config option because I realize that is grief-tastic. So, liquid redstone in just a regular vanilla bottle? Yeah, it was basically nice. it, I like oh, everything a about cheap it. way to make an explosive arrow. And, you know, I was, I, I was goofing around, so, yeah, I'll try this. And it, it works hilariously well. <laughs> Dangerous. You can, back, you can live over their CPW cost a little bit on that one. I'm fine. <laughs> Don't give it to CBW. What, the bow? Hey, if he wants it. I mean, it's whatever, right? It's just arrows. Now, you know what? Explosive arrows, if they do more damage than a regular arrow, those would be really nice against things like the Ender Dragon and the Wither. Well, nice. they're going to do more damage on principle because they do the damage of an arrow plus a TNT. Well, nice. that's an interesting thing. Just fixing that fixes the refinery with respect to uh, metadata liquids. <laughs> Makes sense. Just fixing that one thing. That's cool. Yeah, you have to look at the refinery too, CPW, and make it not like act like it's running when it's not. When it's empty and sad. I will look at that in a minute. I know you yeah, will, because you're the man. Why don't you, why don't you finish working there. on Liquid APIs and Forge and 144 for it, and then handle the minor nuance bug, you know, when everything else also, is working. Um, <laughs> and YouTube, you um, do... I'll be back in just a few minutes. Okay, okay. All right, guys, I'm back. Uh, What's that? Uh, on the Ultimate Lap Pack, one of the mods that we might have to pull on the 144 update is going to be uh, uh, Greg's... The Gravity Suit? Yeah, Gravity Suit. So, so uh, oh, really? that might well take a few more days to update, so... Why do we have an advanced lap pack? pack? Which mod is that for? Fun everyone who's got that. 30, so. <laughs> Which one? Uh, advanced lap pack? Yeah, it's Gravity Sweet. Yeah, that's a uh, Gravity Sweet. So... Wait. The ultimate, super ultimate lap pack, lap pack is from Gravity Sweet. Yeah, it's just tiered version, but you don't need... You can skip it if you like. Well, you need it in order to make the gravy suit. No, there's an ultimate lap pack, and then there's an advanced lap pack. I guess the yeah. advanced lap pack is also from Gravity Suite. Yeah, it's just like okay. a so they're both the same point kind of huh. thing. You don't okay. need to make it, but you can. Cool. How much does that store? Uh, sixty thousand or six hundred thousand, but then it's more cost to upgrade it. Oh, it's a million actually. Yeah, uh, it is more to upgrade, I guess. Yeah, if you go that route. Okay, cool. Fair enough. All right, same mod. Uh, so <laughs> I shouldn't make an ultimate lap pack, is what you're telling me, because we might lose this mod in the server update. Yeah, yeah. it'll be temporary. We, we you lost can... it from 1.4.2 to one uh, 1.3.2 update. You can so, go yeah. ahead and make it. You can make it. You just, when uh, we lose the mod or whatever, you'll just end up having to spawn it in once we get it back. Like, I'm going to have to spawn yeah. in mine. Yeah, I guess I'm going to lose nuclear control, aren't I? 
Oh, you may do. You never want to lose nuclear control. <laughs> but you don't want to lose that, so that's probably going to have to be a critical mod. Well, that like, thing. I'm using it, but uh... I also have a manual kill switch, which I'll leave activated for the server update, so... Yeah. Like, the only thing is, and I'm not sure how it does this, but, like, you have to right-click on your reactor to store a sensor card. Like, I don't think it modifies the reactor in any way, but... Oh, um, oh no, sorry. that's probably just uh, registering a tile entity location. Okay, yeah, that's probably what it's doing. So it won't hurt the reactor, but it will oh. remove the energy sensor blocks until we put the mod back on the server, and I'll just have to cheat them back in. But that's not a problem. I can do that. Hey, uh, Soren, where do you want these parts? Cool. Uh, just put them in a chester and get rid of them through uh, any eye. I don't really care. They're going to be broken when we update if I can't get them fixed before tomorrow. Meanwhile, guys, I've got a bunch of uh, bee products the processing. Fine. They just vanished when I put them in a chest. Oh. The chest I put them in is sorting, sorting somewhere. Oh, yeah. Uh, don't worry. Hey, uh, CBW, um, mm -hmm. I need to make an amendment to that liquid data. Or I guess you can do it because you're adding, you're changing liquid I've data. I've just or... pushed it. What did you want to change? I guess this would actually go with the liquid uh, dictionary, maybe, or something. Uh, liquid, there needs to be a brightness for liquid. So if they're traveling through pipes and it's lava, the pipe should be able to, to determine yeah, like no, a I property. Know. That's, uh, that's the block liquid uh, property data. Okay. That's, uh, that's stuff that's still pending. The actual, basically, block liquid is what I'm expecting everyone to switch to at some point. Uh, that, that will have a whole pile of properties like you know, how much okay. they glow and all that stuff. I'm letting that sort of be defined by the block implementation as it comes. That's fair. Because okay. obviously we need to drive that from the block implementation. Agreed. Um, yeah, I was, uh, we're doing one here on our end, just this is lava, it has this brightness, this is the rest that has this, but then I figured, uh, you know, we should just roll that in, but that makes sense on a block level. All um, right, guys, I'll be back in a minute. Hey right, guys, we're back. Craft is broken. I know what I need to make. See. There's something I've been made like three episodes back and I never actually used. I want to go use it now. I want to check out that heat core thing. Ooh. Yeah, I made it from factorization like a while back. And hey, there it is. Heat hole. Nice. This thing is cool. Hey, Zelda joined us. King, have you actually been on the server yet? He hasn't played Minecraft since March. I'm yeah. aware, but like, why not? Like, are you like actively not playing? And keep in mind, I'm recording. But <laughs> no, I'm not actively not playing. It's just I, I'm a full-time student, and I work half time as an engineer on top of that, and I come home and I mod, and I've just been trying to keep up with everything. Nice. Well, I've got a wand of cooling, so. There. Keep up faster. Yeah. See, this is what I get. It's it's like, hey, we release conduits and they're fantastic and they work this way. And you're like, oh, but they don't they don't rotate quite right. You can't specify each side. I'm just going, oh my god. <laughs> right. I mean, and it's a fair complaint too. That's the other thing is it drives me crazy. And I'm looking for, okay, how can I fix this now? I think it was Louis C.K. had something where. Uh, He's talking about people on an airplane or something, and, and they're whining because the wireless internet on the airplane isn't working. Yeah. And it's just, we get amazingly complacent so fast. Oh, yeah. Wireless internet on an airplane. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a real it problem. Now. I've used it. And it's awesome when it works. Like, I'll play, like, yeah. Netflix or something on a plane and be like, this is awesome. No longer am I bored. <laughs> Do you need item refunds, Zelda? He's not on the... He needs feet. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so, maybe? Alright guys, really I'll be back in a minute. Hey Zelda, yep, I'm, uh, I'm recording were... again by the way guys. Uh, about to wrap up episode uh, 54. Did you see I made a nuclear reactor power plant over here, Zelda? Uh, I seen it yesterday. You had it bugging or something. It was producing double what it should. 
Oh yeah. Now, uh, that's still happening. It's a config setting actually that we have to change and probably will next time the server crashes. But now it's like I pretty see. much all done. What's the config setting called? Like, it's basically like how much power... Uh, the... Energy nuclear generator or something like that? Yep. That's Pretty cool. cool. What are these from? That's the um, IC2 um, add-on nuclear control. Oh, well, wow, that's changed since I last used it then. Yeah. I'll bring this for a sec. See, so look, when I flip this on, you can see it's like it should update there and tell you how much EU it's producing and all kinds of information over here. It'll tell you the temperature, but I have it cooled properly, so it's not building up any heat. Sweet. Not bad, right? Not bad at all. Yeah, back in the so I've got three kill switches. Um, this is the MFSU line coming out here, so if the MFSU is full, it turns off the nuclear reactor. This is the um, wire that's connected to the lever, which is a manual kill switch on the other side of the wall. And this block emits a redstone signal if the hull heat of the reactor goes above 2000. Nice. Pretty cool. Yes, it is. And then I'm using a state cell to, um, you know, if it does hit 2,000, like, the state cell here will wait three minutes before allowing the reactor to turn back on after it cools off. I'll just give the components inside some time to cool. And it activates the blue light, too, to indicate that it's in a cooling cycle for whatever reason. Nice. Not bad, right? All right, what's guys, so... What's um, the ceiling? What's that up there? That's Rath from um, factorization. It's the Wrath Lamp. I see. Yep, it uh, puts blocks, uh, every block within a 9x9 nine nine radius around it, and 30 blocks down uh, is max light level. So that block right there Sweet. is lighting the whole room. I think I can break it with a wrench, we'll find out. Mm -hmm. Just takes a while to break with the wrench. Guess it also takes a while for the lights to dim out. <laughs> Alright, cool. I guess it just takes a while for the wrath lamp to be active. You broke it. I guess. I don't know. But yeah, that's what it does, is it makes it very bright in here. So you don't have to put torches all over the place. Which is one of the things I always I never like yeah, having to cool. like you have a decent sized room and you just, like torches are your only light source. Or like glowstone or red power lamps. But there's nothing that like fills up a room, right? That one does. I like it. Alright guys, so wrapping up point, Direwolf20 signing off, um, episode 54. As always, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, come back next time. Now that I've got this awesome nuclear system, uh, like I said, I'm going to go try and get myself a few blaze rods. Uh, hopefully be able to do some stuff with them. Uh, make a ender chest. And then from there, uh, I don't know, we got plenty more builds to do. I would like to get a frame machine going somewhat soon, but we'll have to wait and see on that uh, once we make sure frames are working. And uh, yeah, tons of stuff to come. So this is Direwolf20 signing off. Take it easy.